On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a preview of the October glossy issue. We will keep you up to date with the upcoming events and our correspondents check in from around the island or here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. The Tobey Boat Show is back October 6th through the 8th. Check out the latest in electronics and fishing gear. From fishing boats to personal watercraft, this show has it all. Free parking and fun for the whole family. For more info, visit nymta.com. Well, what a week of weather we've had. So this week's broadcast will be light on reports. The relentless east wind, big seas, and rain have made the fishing almost impossible from a boat. The surf fishing did come alive with some change in the weather. I also want to thank everybody who made it to the show last week at the Huntington Hilton. I enjoy meeting a lot of the viewers who watch the video every single week. Also, as another reminder, the October glossy issue is out now and it's loaded with fall fishing content. Now that the days are getting shorter and the nights longer, this article from Captain John Raguso is a must read if you are venturing out on your boat in the dark. He writes about the latest technology to keep safe at night on the water. It's Albie time, and Captain Pete Henderson has an informative article on those of you who are targeting the Albies in the Long Island Sound. For the casters fishing the inlets, John Finn has his tips on targeting stripers with big jigs. All this and more in the October glossy issue of the Fisherman Magazine. All this is a good reason to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine and you are automatically entered into our Dreamboat Contest and your chance to win a center console from Steigercraft powered by Yamaha. 30 bucks get to 12 glossy print issues and all the digital issues sent to your inbox. It is one of the best deals going out there right now. Now let's check in with the latest Dreamboat standings with Tim C. Smith. We had one entry in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. The fish was a 2.86 pound sea robin entered by Ken Sparks of Deer Park, New York. That fish stands as the 8th place sea robin. The top three remain unchanged. We have Kyle Kraus in 3rd place with 16 points. Eddie Terrabiel in 2nd place with 18 points. Bobby Cifarelli still stands at the top of the podium with 24 points. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. For those of you who ever dreamed of fishing Alaska, joint publisher and owner of the Fisherman Magazine, Mike Russo, on his recent trip to Tanaku Lodge in Elfin Cove. For years, Tanaku Lodge has made the Northeast Anglers complete another item on their bucket list. Watch the video and see for yourself why Tanaku Lodge is the finest destination in Southeast Alaska. Click on the card in the top right to watch the full video or look for the link in the description below. Now for part two of what's in Jenny Ackerman's plug bag. This week, she talks about sand eel imitations. Hello everyone, welcome back to the backyard. We are here for the part two of the fall run, what's in my bag prep. Last week we talked about peanut bunker, this week we're gonna talk about sand eels. Now sand eels are a little bit different when you're fishing from them off the surf. You have to match the hatch. So for starters, we got a whole spread here of hooks. So I'm gonna be careful picking them out, but we have the classic diamond or Ava jig. I like to use like this olive color or we got a bigger one here, the chartreuse and then like a bone and we got a barrel of monkeys, Ava jigs here, another olive. These are excellent sand eel imitators. They've been a classic for many, many years, way before my time. And you never want to not have them in your plug bag during the fall run. So after the Ava jigs, you can use of course a still got sand on it from last fall um the tsunami sand eel this is another thing you do not want to forget when the sand eels are around because it is a perfect sand eel imitator next up if you want to throw some wood there's always the classic like needlefish this is a little big ed that i like to use with a nice teaser tied on the back of it it's an old wooden 
needle fish, but you could throw needles. Last but not least, you can use different epoxy jigs that these, I mean, it just screams sand eels right here. So you can use these and all these lures are excellent to have in your plug bag. They're relatively slim, so you can fit a lot in your plug bag, which is always a lot of fun. And now, of course, what's fun with um, the sand eel bite is you can double up. So you can take your Ava jig or your epoxy or your tsunami sand eel, tie it or clip it on, and then a little ways up, do a dropper loop, and you can tie on a sand eel teaser. This one right here, this one's got some battle scars, but it's been... <laughs> It's been used and it's caught fish. This is by Shelly Karras, a legendary surf caster at the Jersey Shore. It is a beautiful sand eel imitation. It's got peacock feathers. And this is a great one you can use as a teaser. Another one, uh, this was made by Connor at Grumpy. Shout out Connor, he makes some really nice teasers too. And you can tie these on your dropper loop and have them just a little bit above that main lure and you could double up on some stripers when the sand deals are around. So I hope you enjoyed this little two part series of what's in my bag for the fall run. Whether it's peanut bunker or sand deals, you gotta be prepared. So remember to take this little lull of the dog days of summer, September months to prep your plug bag and get ready for when that fall run season hits. See you guys out there on the beaches. Now let's get to the upcoming events. This Friday, September 29th through October 1st is the Fred Gallifaro Memorial Montauk Classic in Montauk, that is. Sponsored by Long Island State Parks and the Fishermen, there will be cash and tackle prizes for the three largest bluefish and for at least striped bass this year. Entry fee is $20. Awards ceremony will be at Montauk State Park at 12.30 p.m. on Sunday, October 1st. For more info, call 631 Three two one three five one zero. October 6th through the 8th is the Tobey Boat Show. I'm going to be there. October 7th and 8th is the Corcus Cup Gathering of the Anglers. Event begins at midnight on Saturday and runs through 12 noon on Sunday. All fishing clubs in the Inner Club Tournament are eligible to enter. There will be prizes from local tackle shops and a banquet awards dinner for the winning club. Send your inquiries to info at surfcasters.org. October 8th, Timothy O'Rourke will be hosting a Castoberfest casting demo located at the Montauk Lake Club from 2 to 7 p.m. Sage Fishing Fly, Sage Fly Fishing presents a day of rod demos. Montauk Brewing is providing refreshments, and North Fork Ironworks will host the barbecue. A Sage R8 rod will be raffled off along with other prizes. Then on October 14th, Generations Bass Tournament hosted by the Harbor Crab right behind me over here restaurant and marina honoring jay nichols and paul ambrose boundaries are shinnecock you know to tow bay beach captain's wow. meeting is sunday the 10th lines in at 6 a.m weighing at 4 15 p.m at the restaurant it's a 100 dollar entry that includes gifts open bar and dinner buffet after the fishing contact mark miller at 631-721-3041 for more information visit the fisherman.com slash events Marine Maid of Lindenhurst and Starbright are giving away up to $1,000 in free fuel. All you need to do is purchase any Starbright product. Every item you purchase gets you into the weekly drawing. September 30th is the last chance to enter, so visit Marine Maid in Lindenhurst now for your chance to win. Let's take a look at some notable catches from around the island last week. First up is Jack Auburn. He's with his dog, Blue, who caught this 9.10 pound fluke inside the bay on a live peanut bunker. The fish measured 28 inches in length. Tatiana also fished Montauk before the wind kicked up last week and had this big albie right outside the harbor entrance. Also, I want to give a shout out to Jay, who broke the 40 pound mark as well during the, uh, the wind last week on a surf bite. Fish took a bucktail with a green tail on the back of it. Aside from that, boat reports were slim this week because of the relentless winds. 
The good that came out of it was some spark in the surf action across the island. Montauk had a small run of fish along its north side to about 32 inches, but the real good action came from the south shore inlets. I got word of fish from both Marichish and Shinnecock Inlet to 40 pounds or so with fish in the 20s and 30s as well. Kenny from Tight Lines did say a lone 30-pounder was caught on a Southampton stretch at some point during the week also. Some reports of Albies came in from a few of the North Fork beaches as well. Truman's is typically a good spot to focus on for them. If you have a notable catch, email me at mbroderick at thefisherman.com with a photo and all the details, and I will try to get into the weekly video fishing forecast for the magazine. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Rich is back from down south where he hooked up with redfish, black drum, and big fluke. Rich, how is our weekend looking? Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast. And before we do, got some you know, fishing photos to show you. I was out in the trip, uh, you know, away down in the Carolinas the past week, and uh, I was lucky enough to do some fishing down there with some good weather. Intercoastal waterway, southeast corner of North Carolina. We had some, uh, you know, a little black drum in the back bay, some of the marshes there. I got my first red drum. You know, these were smaller fish, but they were fun on light tackle. But in the mix, some bigger fish on the finger mullet here. You know, some fluke, of course, they call them southern flounder down there. Upwards of six to seven pounds we had on light tackle in the back bay. It was pretty cool, you know, so some fun stuff you've got down that area, uh, around the uh, the Wilmington area down in Myrtle Beach, if you uh, check out some of the local guides down there. I can have some fun with some back bay uh, inshore uh, fun fishing this time of year. All right, for us, though, hasn't been too much fun with the weather, of course. Terrible stuff. Last uh, seven days here, water temps came down back to the 60s. You can check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites. It's a general overview on what's coming this weekend. And I do see big waves on Saturday. Still four to seven feet, northeast breeze, not a good ocean day. The sand will be riled up a bit. Maybe the surf guys but kind of they can get away with it. You know, GFS showing a little bit of rain again with more of an east-northeast on uh, Saturday. So not the day to do stuff. But Sunday looks better. I think we got a lighter breeze coming in from the north-northeast and maybe things settle down a bit. You can see again that the gradient, a little east-northeast on Sunday, Saturday. But Sunday, it looks a little bit better. So my pick of the weekend, going to do some fishing on the ocean or anywhere, would be Sunday. You got 60s in your 70s. Saturday, still a cool, cloudy, clammy day. A little better on Sunday, we get some 70s, Guru confirming. We still see the colors with a northeast wind Saturday. You know, probably a stay-home day but or a back bay day. But it looks like Sunday, there is some hope finally getting in some decent fishing. So hopefully that fall run kicks in soon with things cooling down. Safe as always. Catch them up. Have a great weekend. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody from Montauk. As everybody knows, it's been a terrible week weather-wise, so not a whole lot to report this week. Um, offshore, pretty much non-existent. I doubt anybody was even willing to consider getting offshore. Um, before the storm on uh, last week, there were some good signs. Um, we had some nice busting bass on the surface, schooling fish, anywhere from just under slot to slot size. So that was a good sign of things to come for the fall. Uh, hitting a lot of bait and actually some big pods of bass. So that was good. False albacore kind of popped back up. They settled in just in time for the blow to start. Um, that was Friday morning. And then by Friday afternoon, northeast wind kicked in and that shut everything down. Um, the fluke bite was actually quite good. The Miss Montauk had a pair of double digits, I think, on Friday. Um, I got a couple pictures of that. So that's um, that's a good sign. Um, the ebb tide, I know, they're canceled until Friday. They're hoping to get out Saturday. So the weather's still not looking great up until Saturday. And then Sunday, it looks like it lays down. And then next week will be better. So be patient. Get back on the water. And hopefully things will be good. All right. Thank you, Matt. Talk to you soon. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. Uh, you know, Look, honestly, the weather has been keeping us and a lot of other people at the dock. So is uh, kind of typical for your your fall, you know, into September, going into October weather. Uh, but when people have been able to sneak out uh, on the inshore front, you know, you're seeing albies, which are outside of Montauk and outside of Shinnecock, out by us. 
uh, black sea bass starting to kick up, which is going to be great. Uh, and we even know some guys throwing in some cod reports, which are uh, obviously exciting. One of our favorite fish to eat. Um, on the offshore front, uh, kind of same story. Weather's been really tough to get out there. Uh, but when people have been managed to get out there, uh, there's been a good chunk bite that's going on outside of Shinnecock, um, as well as kind of pushing further out east. So hopefully we get some, you know, more weather windows, uh, some better fall fishing guys, and still, a, you know, a lot to look forward to. Thanks, Matt. Back to you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike D. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, first off, good seeing everybody at the show last week. Uh, just a, a great job by the staff, the vendors, the speakers. I sat in on Dave Anderson's talk and got some great insights into, um, you know, some of the, you know, his vast, vast uh, amount of knowledge and hope to incorporate it into my fishing. Heard great reviews from what Alberto had to say in his talk and Bill Wetzel and Chris Parisi and just everyone so um just really cool to be such a you know part of such a strong community of anglers you know here on long island throughout the tri-state area and uh really appreciate appreciate all the work of the vendors that got there that um you know support the show all the readers and you know subscribers to this youtube report um so really good one definitely got me amped up for for fishing which hasn't really been all that great with this you know wind and the kind of remnants of ophelia it's been uh, a little tough to kind of have you know good surf casting conditions for bass which is kind of about the only option a couple of boats i saw in the bay earlier today trying to get the last licks in for fluke um so you know soon enough we'll have todd coming up um, but I'm kind of all about chasing the, the stripers off the beach. Like I know a, a good number of people that watch this are doing, uh, no big surprise, stick to the inlets. It's worth putting the time in. There are some fish around. They're not thick. Uh, it's not every cast. It's like a couple of tide. Maybe I've seen a few fish caught and they were nice size, you know, slot a little bit over. Um, so, you know, we'll see, we got this full moon coming up. Um, you know, and plus once the water's calm, that might really get things going. So, um, but they are there now if you want to put the time in. So definitely do that. Okay. Um, all right. Let us know how you do. And I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Hey, folks, taking a little break from uh, one of our custom Boga orders. If you're into the Boga grips, we're like, uh, we make a lot of custom stuff. We also do cleaning. You can check us out online. You know, if you were out on the beach you totally were a winner this week and this past week you know the wit the weather was like really rainy as we all know heavy winds from the east northeast to put the fish and the bait on the shore so a lot of people out there if you were a surf caster this was totally like your time to go out and shine and just have a great time boat people not so much it was like batting down the hatches but there were plenty of bluefish a lot of striped bass in the mix too and it was just a total frenzy of fish it was a great time to go out and have a great time and uh, just stay really busy instead of sitting in the house and being a couch potato uh we're busy at the shop keeping up with custom orders and uh, service works coming in remember blackfish season's coming up and uh, that means uh, time to come get some of our custom jigs and uh, we make for uh, black fishing, usually starts out with the shallow bite, it's fantastic. Then you move off to like 30, 40 feet as the weather gets cooler and these blackfish shift back into deeper waters. So we've got plenty of green crabs for you. Come in, we float and remember, we got the healthiest green crabs around. And um, that's about it for the reports. Go out there, false albacore, let's see what's happening after this big blow, if they're gonna be turned on again. Boats are starting to go out a little bit at a time. Uh, get out there, have a great time. I bid you peace and tight lines. Let's check in with Brendan Rutigliano of Cap Tree Bait Tackle and Fuel. Thanks, Matt. This week started off great with plenty of fluke in the bay, some great offshore reports of fluke, bonita, tuna. Uh, then we had the storm, a little bit harder for boats to get out there. Uh, the fleet really didn't get out this weekend, which was terrible for us, but... You know, it is what it is, but let's focus on what the storm brought, uh, which was colder water, a little bit, you know, colder. So we still have that fluke action, which is awesome. The boats went out today and did amazing. Uh, today's Wednesday that I'm recording this, sorry. <laughs> but uh, more bass and blues have been, already been showing up. Uh, they're in the usual spots already, um, but we're really not up to that full uh, season yet. But uh, plenty of time to get out there, look for those calmer days for the, uh, you know, if you're just getting into it, the hardcore guys, be safe, you know, get out there when you can, but be safe. Um, so just 
plenty of calm days to, to go and fish in the fall, so don't worry, uh, you could definitely get out there. Uh, capture will be open, weather permitting, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. throughout uh, Thanksgiving. Jones Beach uh, just turned to our fall hours, so we're closed Monday through Thursday, open Friday 12 to 7, Saturday and Sunday 9 to 7. So I'll see you guys out there, and thanks for everybody stopping by the uh, fisherman booth and uh, saying hello. So thanks. In the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island report. Uh, last Thursday, the last decent day we had for fishing, uh, the fluke bite was really on hot. I fished with a buddy of mine, we had a limit, all beautiful fish, and uh, then the weather came in on Friday and it's been blowing east ever since, so I have very few reports, nobody really fished, definitely nobody fished offshore, and even inshore it was horrendous uh, the last five, six days. So. Uh, fluke season ends on the 4th of October, but I think the bite should be great, and it looks like the weather from Sunday on looks excellent. So we're going to get out there, good prospects, and also with this cooling down of the water, I expect to see some striped bass showing up as well. So that's it for this week, Matt. We'll talk to you next. With our Fly and Freshwater Report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, the storm seems to have been finally blown away. This is Tuesday. Uh, I'm trying to get out there a little bit. There is a, some wind. I only have an hour or two. Tide's uh, pretty low, so I, I don't have that high hopes. But I'm trying to practice something I do very rarely, and that is surf fish with my spinning rod. Normally, I'm always out there with my fly rod. But anyway, today I'm going to give it a shot for a few hours, see what happens. Um, as far as the rest, well, most of the captains stayed in short. They didn't leave the dock this week. It was just too rough. Uh, hopefully this week it will calm down and they'll be able to get out. Uh, the surf, well, it's starting to kick up. You know, the surf fishing is really starting to get into high gear. And uh, we'll see. As far as the first one it goes, the good news is all the streams have caught, have gotten rain. So our Long Island streams depend on groundwater and they're back up to where they should be at this time of year. And so they're, they're, people are getting out there and catching fish. Uh, one of my guides, uh, James, well, he actually went out and fished one of the small spring creeks unknown to most people. And uh, he had a few browns, all on ants. And, and uh, as far as the Catskills go, they didn't get the rain we got, but they did come up a little bit, but totally fishable. Last week, the Long Island Fire Riders had their uh, fall outing to the beaver kill. And it wasn't easy fishing. And the guys with experience were able to land fish. Uh, but everybody had a great time. So that's what it's all about. Uh, I like to say thanks to everybody, Mike, everybody from the fishmen. We had a great time last week. We had on uh, Thursday night at the expo. I think it's great that you guys do that. So let's get out there, see if I can catch some fish. I don't know, but until next week, tie lines, everybody. Let's check with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. I'm reporting live from the infamous Hull Over Inlet here in Miami, Florida, where I came down for the mullet run. There is an epic mullet run happening about 60 miles north of here in Jupiter. The mullet haven't quite reached South Beach. I did uh, net some mullet uh, a little while ago, uh, just a small school, so trying to catch some snook and tarpon. Also going out on official reward charters, so definitely the best charter down here. The blackfin have returned, so the fish is going to be uh, unfishable uh, weather for the next uh, 10 days in New York. So come on down to Miami, hop on reward, jump on the beach. This mullet run should happen in South Beach in the next week. Um, in New York, shout out to Calvin from Fishing the Atlantic. Salute the whole crew for cleaning up the Cross Bay Bridge. Us as fishermen, sometimes we leave a mess behind. Uh, so it's good to clean up after ourselves. Salute the 18 Fishing the Atlantic. Calvin for organizing the cleanup of the Cross Bay Bridge. All right, it's a good look for the fishing community. All right, peace out. Ben Gilmore is back with the latest from Costa Rica. Ben. Hello there everyone, how's it all going? This is Ben Gilmore from down here in sunny Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. 
Guys, we had some really exciting stuff going on down here in Costa Rica. Just this week, we've been deploying satellite tags in rooster fish as part of the Gray Fish Tag Research Program. So the Fisherman Magazine have been supporting us with this program for the last couple of years. We deployed only two days ago, we deployed a satellite tag in our late, latest rooster fish, a 41 inch fish, about 25 pounds. And that tag is gonna stay deployed for the next 100 days. So stay tuned for, for results of that. Guys, offshore, we've had some beautiful blue marlin out there. We've had a nice yellowfin tuna bite and some big bull dorados as well. We're getting ready here for our Dorado Derby tournament in November. Stay tuned for that. The fishing's hot. We're ready, guys. We'd love to see you down here in Costa Rica. Thank you so much. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. The Fisher Magazine has launched their apparel store. We have hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts all online now and free shipping with orders over 100 bucks. It is the perfect gift for yourself or that angler that you know. Visit thefisherman.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. Looks like it's finally going to be a little calmer this weekend and we'll be able to get a good sense if the fluke are still around. Remember the Montauk Classic will be running Friday through Sunday. I'll be there at the awards ceremony. See you all next Thursday for the weekly video fishing forecast for all the updates around the island.